Reserve time. Complexities turn to ban. <sighs> Radiant team ban. Complexities turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team back. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what is game number two now of this two game series? I am Frankie CPK, joined by CCNC here as my co caster. And you're tuning into the Star Ladder I League Star Series American Qualifiers. So, uh, our second series, our middle series, Ten even of the day, remaining. Complexity versus Onyx, and Team Onyx up one game to nothing right now in this Five two game series. It remaining. definitely could have gone either way last game, but Team Onyx. Uh, they just simply uh, played a little bit better, you know, it came down to that somewhat of a base race of sorts at the end, but the Invoker play of Flea, this standard player Flea is actually performed pretty well, I think it's safe to say, in that first game. Uh, well, what do you think, CC? Yeah, I think France has played very well, it's gone by several previous, uh, several names in the past, was playing a duo before this team, they didn't really find too much success, but... Playing with a lot of, you know, better known players and more experience, so maybe learning a lot from them, getting better while playing with them where you find an opportunity like that. So he's probably really trying to get the most out of this time while Abed isn't in the US and he's playing with all these players with a whole lot of experience and knowledge about the game. Ten seconds remaining. And he is going to possibly be playing a Shadow Fiend this time around. Five seconds The remaining. second pick Shadow Fiend, Omni Knight Shadow, that's such an odd start, I feel like. Not not a typical one. Reserved what are they thinking with this? Um, Shadow Fiend, I think very good versus Radiant Ember Spirit in lane. Back. Also, just generally good versus in the game. There's a hero that you can play around. Uh, will do quite well versus him in the lane. You can take his towers. Complexities turn to battle. Um, shutting an Ember Spirit down early is something that's typically very hard to do because you can always just farm the lane with his uh, Flame Guard and then just push out the wave and you can never really break it. But Shadow Fiend is a hero that actually can break it as he does have three nukes. So able to bring down the shield as he builds up more and more damage. He's going to right click the Ember Spirit down. We'll have a very hard time in the lane. As well as picking the Omni Knight. So. Getting a hero that they're able to just five man around, heal up the Shadow Fiend, play around him. Reserve time. And, you know, obviously Omni Knight as well, very good versus the Ember Spirit. So, obviously, a pre planned um, response that they had to this Ember Spirit. So, expecting them to pick it and having this Omni Knight Shadow Fiend. So, a five man centric lineup, a lineup that's very hard for the Ember Spirit to fight into. <clears throat> Dubu typically plays their Omni Knight, so maybe you can look for a, a hero that with a good stun versus the Ember Spirit for their offline or maybe a Leech Commander or something like that. So they uh, so they actually have a means of catching this Ember Spirit and that have sort of this Radiant invincible five man trap walk down towers and complexity isn't able to fight into. Yeah. Complexity goes the Ember as mentioned, but then they also go a warlock. Now warlock kind of another one of these complexity favorite heroes i feel like you know that maybe isn't as popular on other teams as Ten of late i mean warlock remaining. has definitely died off and leshrac of course being banned by onyx another one of those examples Five but uh remaining. the warlock's second pick get here oh uh, yeah he's on the, the warlock is good um, Onyx going for the sort of draft where they want to have this Complexity invincible 5 man where they walk down back. towers and Complexity realizing that saying hey we want to be able to fight you with these towers Complexity never a team to turn down a fight or pick a draft that really doesn't ever want to fight so yeah. picking this Warlock and being ready to fight them with these towers so like getting a quick 6 on the Warlock so they can take these team fights also can pair, pairs up extremely well Radiant Ember's team. Veil all that magic damage combined with the Fatal Bonds just can massacre an entire team uh, if you get the the triple remnant or multiple heroes, so I, I've seen I saw this the last game as well. But I'm curious what you think about this idea that complexity is banning Meepo now. Ten seconds remaining. Abed is arguably known as one of the best, if not the best, Meepo player. Obviously, again, Five not here. Please stepping in for him. Does Flea play it, or is it Fran still Fran worth Fran banning? Fran yeah, Francis plays Meepo. Okay. So just to clarify player. that then. 
so yeah, it still he's makes one sense. Yeah, he's one of the few high MR Meeple players in NA. Uh, before RTZ learned it, and a couple other players, him and then, you know, there's some like lower MR players, some 6Ks that play Meeple, but he's really the only 8K player that plays Meeple in NA. Yeah. For RTZ. Well, there you go, guys. There's a, there's a reason as to why they're still banning the Meepo. Side of complexity. So, the bans finish up. Now, you mentioned a, a, perhaps a stun heavy offlaner. The Slaughter is actually still on the board. He made it through. Yeah, there is still the, uh, there's still the Slaughter Leech Commander as well. Um, yeah, the, the Slaughter not really great versus Omni Knight Shadow Fiend. Um, can be good versus the Omni Knight if you want to right click him down, but not great versus the super strong five man lineups. As they'll typically pick strong lanes, so not great in the off lane. And then also get more for Onyx to be fair against Flexity. Yeah, it could be. Uh, it, could, it could be good for Onyx. Um, you know, it's decent versus the Ember Spirit, decent versus the Warlock. They already have a. Uh, they already have their four in the Omni Knights. Dubu almost always playing the Omni. They can run it on bold from time to time, but typically it's the four Omni Knights. So. Now, Slaughter offline, not the most popular right now. They may go for it. Uh, I think they have run it maybe once or twice. Uh, I'm sure they've run it, you know, probably once or twice in scrims, but almost always this Dubu Omni Knight is one of his favorite heroes. He really likes to just sort of run it. People play this fight you style, sort of leftover from, uh, you know, MB Phoenix there. It's sort of style that they <laughs> bring into this team. Complexities. Oh, turn to well, pick. There, there's a hero that stuns and stuns pretty well. The Earthshaker has a long range fissure, of course, and. You mentioned they, they could actually use one, so I guess that, that kind of accomplishes that. Is, is that going to be a three Earth Shaker then? That would make sense. Uh, yeah, it still could be the offlane Omni Knights. Uh, could also be an offlane Earth Shaker, but they do pick up the the hero with catch. So, uh, you know, a good hero to to stun down this Ember Spirit has multiple Ten stuns, seconds, can break his shield quite easily in these team fights. Um, Five can also set up remaining. potential kills on mid from far away if he is Beast roaming. Master. He's offline. What Come is happening? Oh. Turn to pick. oh, there you go. That kind of throws everything for a loop. So, yeah, the offlane, I mean, it could be a jungle Beastmaster. I know that's maybe a thing, but... So they, they could throw the Beastmaster into the jungle and then put the Earthshaker offlane with remaining. the support Omni Knights. Um, they may, because they do not have the greatest Five lane support, they may pick a very, very independent laner for Mason. Uh, maybe the Razor, the hero that he, uh, in time. particular, one of the few NA players that really likes that hero. Um, there's still the Razor, um, uh, other indi er, independent heroes, the Centaur War Runner banned out, so probably not gonna, you know, not gonna be able to get him for the safe line. The Juggernaut's still here, pretty good in this game, a pretty self-dependent or a, um, an independent carry but they're gonna be have to be looking for a, a strong laner for mason is they're gonna be putting somebody in the jungle probably the beastmaster and maybe running the omni knight in the offlane or shaker roaming around we'll have to see kind of some interesting picks but um, like we sort of talked about city last game had some very strong team fights a very strong push but not really any catch in onyx not having that issue this game with two very good heroes that catching this umber spirit they do find him in a position where they can stun him and lock him down. Yeah. So yeah, still curious about how they lane it, but it definitely makes sense as far as the overall idea what Team Onyx is going for. As far as complexity is concerned, they third picked that Rubik, so it's nothing too uh, questionable there. Uh, now, Rubik, I feel like, is pretty good against the likes of an Omni Knight. And there was a series that I cast a little bit ago for a completely different tournament, but the Rubik player in that, you know, kept stealing the Guardian Angel specifically and to help turn fights in their favor. And so that could be a nice Sniper. tool to use against them. Sniper coming out with a fourth pick. Yeah, uh, uh, quite a good sniper game. Ember Sniper is a very nice combo, as you can always be chasing people with the shrapnel on top, so it's a whole lot of damage over time. Very good at defending towers, um, which is sort of what Onyx wants to do. Uh, I do sort of worry for him, though. If they fall behind early in this game, could get constantly scouted out by these uh, by the Hawks, and they do have multiple jumpers. The Shadow Fiend may even go for a blink this game, but Francis in particular is a player that has been known to go for the blink. Shadow Fiend this patch, so popular to many patches ago around the DAC era, but he still goes for it from time to time, so they go for it this game. We'll give them some maybe some even more pickoff potential. That's a little bit of theory crafting, but Sniper is a potentially can be a very good pick. The Warlock uh, Golem also very nice at making space for him in team fights. Final Five van to come by complexity. Remain. See Darkseer taken away from Team Onyx. They do still need their offlaner, so Darks could have potentially Reserve been time. an option here. 
complexity figuring out who they want to ban again team onyx they could do many of things so i guess they neither one though is really obvious here or along those yeah. lines slark maybe is that here like seconds remaining here um it's not the greatest first ember spirit as you really it Complexes takes you so many items to be able to get to the point where you can actually kill him or shut him down um, can always be remnant away, so you need like an abyssal blade and you need enough damage to right click him down. By the time you have that, he's got radiance or he's got items to keep radiance him alive. Team. Complexity actually going for the Abaddon, so pulling a page out of Freedom's book. <laughs> Very over good there, this yeah. game. Versus uh, <laughs> the, the Roar as well as the Fissure, super good at purging off both of those. And also, you know, Onyx, you could sort of see banning off the Dark Seer, one of the strongest uh, off laners. Very good in these 1v1 scenarios. Five seconds remaining. As he just gets tons of farm, gets a super fast mech. But Abaddon, sort of on the same train, an extremely strong 1v1, -er, especially versus time. most melee carries. So Onyx may be forced into going for that Razor. We'll have to see what they choose to go for. But I really like this Abaddon pick. It's super good here. It continues to bolster the team fight. So Complexity gearing up to fight Onyx at these towers whenever they do group up to try and take them. Themselves, but you mentioned he yeah, had Team Freedom known for perhaps Ten doing that as well. Remaining. And um, that uh, Aphotic Shield is most certainly going to be useful for this team here. Weaver is going to be the final pick, actually, coming out on the side of Team Onyx. So they push him. Assume that's where that's going to end up, of course. That Mason Overall Weaver. Wings. Infamous Mason Weaver, one of his um, specialty heroes. Um, like we talked about, a independent carry, so can lane solo versus Abaddon quite easily uh, should be a reasonably even lane the weaver may be pulling ahead once he has a few levels and could possibly get a kill with a rotation from the earth shaker we'll have to see uh, who is offlane but, but beastmaster is jungle which he most probably will be a whole lot of kill potential between a rubik and ember spirit and a warlock uh, so i would assume omni knight probably gonna sap as much xp as he can up in his top level beastmaster heads to the jungle all right, so keeping an eye on the early build here, but definitely a fun one shaping up to be yet again. Team Onyx versus Complexity had a hell of a game one. Came down to a bit of a base race there at the end, and uh, hoping for a similar result. Here, he's at the oh, letter. What's happened? Or is attempting to be placed. You see, love yourself, aka Bulba. Get the server war done quickly. Warlock gonna make his way to the top lane now. But so Bulba playing the Beastmaster here and setting up as if he may actually go the off lane. Um, over here. So aggressive dual lane, perhaps? Yeah, it could be an Earthshaker uh, Beastmaster dual lane. They're not the strongest of lanes, uh, complexity isn't, level 1. And it looks like they guess they just want to keep the supports tied down here, as the Rubik can ha have a lot of kill potential mid with the Sniper. And the SF at early levels, so when Sniper gets level 3, has the 2 points in the Shrapnel, and set up kills in him. So coming up here, it looks like he's going to try and force the supports to stay here, and maybe get as much as he can. Um, doesn't get 2 sets of regions, or he doesn't get 3 sets of regions, just getting the 1 Tango, 1 Salve, and Stout Shield, so... As the Iron Talon queued up, maybe going to start in the lane, keep the supports here early on, give the SF a little bit of space, and then go back to the jungle afterwards. So I like this play okay. from Bulba, giving his Shadow Fiend a little bit of space early on. There, Shadow Fiend is going to pick up that banner, and of course, the space as well begins. as Mason ready to pick up the bottom one. So no rune contestion this time around. To the either side getting their own runes, cancel on the sniper. In that middle lane, that does mean Ember Spirit going to be in the hands of Moo, meanwhile. Yep. They yeah, see this ward here, but Warlock not long enough range to hit it, so he walks down the hill and then he can't see it anymore, so... <laughs> needs, uh, need Boo to walk over so he can take it down. And they do kill it. A little bit of extra gold and some XP for Swindle, so very nice there for this top lane. Spent in that vision, so well played now. All the way up here, gonna have to deal with the harassment of Warlock. Currently, Earthshaker, okay, he's gonna do a block of sorts that fissure and bring in the oh jungle. Oh my goodness. We've done this before. Yep, so they're going to pull a hard camp, so that was their plan. You know, last time the tower with the Beastmaster and Demon going to be able to farm up these camps, get a few more levels in the fissure, and then maybe, maybe look to rotate somewhere, but z Freak knows what's going on, heads over here, and is going to at least sap some of this XP, maybe try and steal a couple of last hits. 
hanging it out as if maybe wants to have somebody come over and rotate over, and it looks like actually Moo is rotating over, so they really want to make a play on Earthshaker. He has a lift ready to go. Demon almost running into him, doesn't though. Then Moo will pull the creep wave. And Z-Freak will kind of walk it off. He did place the ward, though. So they'll be able to see if they attempt that in the future. Crafty plays are trying to make middle lane. Shrapnel comes out, but Rubik just a little bit too far. Demon will throw in a couple of auto attacks to really get him out there. But early start for Sniper versus the Shadow Fiend. Three and three Sniper versus a three and four Shadow Fiend. Very early on. Oh, and actually Sniper might be in some trouble. Blocked yeah, not in, quite maybe level not. three on the Shadow <laughs> Fiend, so doesn't have very much damage until he has his level three raises or level two raises. So if he was level three, maybe he could have gone for the kill, but a little bit low. Got headshot proc two times in a row, not wanting to risk giving a turnaround kill to the sniper. Yes. Oh, I was gonna take the right here, fairy fire. Oh, but the lift to the last second. I think he would have died to that raise. So a nice save. Yeah, he definitely would have died. Actually, he only had 125 HP. So a nice save from Z Freak. Flying around this mid lane, but as he is here, Bulba is getting quite a bit top to go for the Axis level 1, so giving a little more damage. 9 CS on Speed Master because those pulls able to last the Ender Tower. Bulba, top of the CS charts, and you don't really want to see Beastmaster getting getting a good start. It's a hero that no. needs levels and farm typically to thrive, not just a hero that can get level 6 and do a whole lot. can go for some roar ganks, but after a little bit of time, needs those Necker books to have a big impact. So it's a very good start for this Beastmaster that he really wants to have some cheeky pull shenanigans with Z-Free blocking it up, so no more pulls for this Shaker. Yeah, not for now at least. So bottom lane, we do have the Omni deck down here, Dubu. The one playing it, we're gonna... Oh, trade auto attacks with Abaddon, who's to do some jungling of sorts with the creep pull, and it's at least the one last to throw it in there as, oh my god, that was the middle lane. Uh, the exchange just right there. Oh boy. I apologize, guys. Shadow Fiend going for Sniper, though, and Shadow Fiend got the kill first. Were you catching that by chance? I uh, know, I was looking bottom. <laughs> you got caught in the trap with me. Uh, yeah, no. I'm not the cameraman, though. Yeah, it's like, you get, you get off. Uh, Anyways, but the, obviously the flea getting the advantage though in terms of getting the kill first. Pick up the first blood. Yeah, he also Looks got like the souls because off. he got the kill himself. So even though he does die and lose half of his souls, nothing is deal. Still at 12 after respawning. But basically a dual, a dual lane versus dual lane scenario in this mid lane. Neither team wanting to let their squishy mid hero get punished by the rotating heroes of the other team. So just sort of sacking each other's XP a little bit. Playing this dual lane, trying to enable their, uh, their cores, is they both sort of want to play around these heroes. It's, whenever you pick a sniper here, it's typically a very sniper oriented line if you play around the sniper to protect him. And same with the Shadow Fiend, picking up the Tommy Knight first pick along with him, so wanting to help him whack down these towers, having someone to protect him, and try and body this Ember Spirit around the map. Ember Spirit, he's having free farm up here at the top lane. 23 and 4 free farm now, leading the way here. Abaddon 13 and 1 down here at the bottom, meanwhile. Managing some okay farm himself. Chin back at him. Yeah, you do see Beastmaster into the jungle with that Iron Talon. Chin to continue to pick up his farm. You mentioned the Necronomicon books. Get those ASAP. Bottom lane, monkeys. These should be fine. Pressure coming out. Or, or is he? A Botic Shield? It's worn off now, but. His top tower is under attack. Yeah, not gonna go for it. A little bit risky. Could have some TP support, maybe turn around and kill, so not wanting to get over aggressive. Puck City getting some chip damage up on this top tower, pushing the wave in, catapult, honking away, but Bulba may go down. Yeah, they're gonna throw Bulba right back into them. No chance for him to escape. Demon already throwing out his phaser, so that will be a kill. Melon securing it there on that Warlock. So well played in the tower. Continue to take more damage. We're gonna pop the fortification, in fact, as bottom lane monkeys have to do the same thing down here in terms of defending. But uh, both of these first tier towers could be dropping in the near future. The way the play is going out, but it's top play. We're not done just yet. It's, yeah, he's going to throw out another fissure right here on the wrong side, though. And Warlock will just simply walk it off. Yeah, so many three heroes up here to try and defend this, or two heroes up here to try and defend this tower as long as possible. But with TPing immediately back up and Radiant's only losing about half HP, a little bit more than that, so pretty good. Opportunity. The next time they have a catapult, should be able to finish it up completely. I'm see if they try soon or continue to wait a little bit. Looks like they're going to just go for monkeys. <laughs> yeah, but this, this is going to come at a cost big time. Z-Frick going for the double tap. Yo, oh, the one where, yes, he got it. 
Omni and I did actually fall monkey's credit for the kill right there. In the end, wow, a two for one exchange. So the dive was real and ended up biting them in the ass for Team Onyx. Yeah, and as we talked about earlier, they were, you know, not getting too aggressive, not diving this Abaddon under the tower, but slipping a little bit. And now Z Freak level five, actually going for treads. So maybe going for that damage talent and gonna, you know, wax the people. We'll have to see that. It'd be a little bit clowny. But we've seen how Z Freak can play on this Rubik, so I think a very nice start for him. Not what Onyx really wanted to give in this game, as there are a lot of good spells to see Aurora, Fissure, Time Lapse, Shikuchi, yeah. obviously a very, very good one. So. A lot of purification, of course, so a lot of good spells to seal and the Rubik off to a very good start. Yeah, that is something that's really beefing up. He's going to roam through the jungle right here, see if he can maybe get information at the very least. And to the bounty room, but of course that's already taken. He's going to run into the Beastmaster right here. He's pinked out, though, and the fallback is going to go for the port. Not going to happen. Fissure will catch him as he freaks. He has his power threats, as you mentioned, going to throw him over the Fissure. This bar, though, going to block him. This is just a matter of time, and there's no way he escapes here. Uh, can he get come on the dudes? That would be uh, something. Uh, no. He didn't get crit one time. Wow. None of the wolves crit. If, he, if they all crit, he would have died. So, be free. Asking for some luck, not getting any. They were lucky. Oh well. Radiant yeah, he falls. Is under attack. Like we said, uh, the second part, catapult coming in top, and it looks like the tower may go down. Dubu TPing in has to repel, so a little hard to kill him. I'm not willing to use the chase just yet. Just yet, they do come out, but the tower continuing to get whittled down with these range creep catapults. Dubu needs to uh, be careful himself now as Mason ports in. Gonna chase after the Warlock, however. I think he now moves a little slippery, so not the easiest to go. Middle lane, meanwhile, cancel gets caught. Looks like that was a roar used by Beastmaster, and sure was. Monkeys gets here. Pops that borrowed time, however. Stop attacking him, of course, and they will fall back. So Snapper, dope here in the middle. And they secure the kill. Top lane, we're not done just yet. Swinomel gets picked off, actually, as Mason's able to dive in with that Shikuchi and secure a kill himself. So a couple of big kills for Team Onyx. And may get a third. Yeah, Ray secures the kill. And Z Freak, meanwhile. Yeah, this is a very, very, a very strong timing for Onyx. They have so many nukes, so much burst potential. Fissure, all these raises, the Weaver skitter scattering around level eight now. Max level Shikuchi in two points of the swarm and cancel getting pressure now as well. Pick up a salva base, so you're gonna be forced to use that. Oh, man, whoa! <laughs> That's an eight, baby. Boom, headshot. Drops down the Weaver there in the middle lane. Then hop over to the shrine. So yeah, I don't know. Weaver just underestimated the uh, sniper damage right there, I guess. Also tanked the tower a little bit. Not yeah, that's pretty planned. bad for uh, pretty bad for Onyx. The Weaver way down, giving Sniper a little bit of a catch up. So it's like he does have his face boost now or whatever. Graded boots he has chose to chose to to go for, and Abaddon coming mid. Try to protect Cancel a little bit earlier, and now committing to this tower with this. They do have the Golem on the Warlock, so. Big fight maybe going down top is both teams committing three or four heroes this mid lane, only Dubu and move up top now. Z Freak down bottom, continuing to split push. Who chasing out Dubu at the top lane, by the way? He's gonna pop the. Oh, he actually gets caught with the Searing Chains, and not gonna be enough turn damage, though. In fact, yep, it is gonna be killed. A remnant chasing back down. Bounces back in. So well played right there by move. Bottom lane from Aurora. It's up on a Z Freak. He's trying to get away now. He has a spell steal. He's trying to get the spell steal from the. Pretty sure he's trying to do it from the Beastmaster. He did a good job of dodging right there. Managed to allow Shadow Fiend to finish the job, so kind of a one for one situation as again Omni Knight picked up in the top lane, meanwhile. Yeah, they had a nice kill there, not letting this Rubik sit there and just freely farm down in this bottom lane, get free XP, pushed up very far, and they do get the kill. Not the biggest deal in the world as you do force uh, Maneski over, so not farming this mid lane, not farming up jungle camps, but they do get the nice kill on the Rubik. And Abaddon comes down to his bottom line to fill his place, but Abaddon a little bit behind as well, so Rubik a little more farm than usual, but Abaddon a little more poor than usual. Only has the Phase Woods and the Bassy right now. Looks like he's going to be going for the Vlads, not the typical mech that Ike's might goes for. A lot of um, Abaddon plays happen nowadays going for, so changing up a little bit, going for the classic Logan Bob style. We'll have to see how it pays off. Yeah. Top lane Mason, he's gonna make his way, although Rubik, he stole the Shikuchi himself, so that's definitely a solid ability to have if you're the Rubik. Definitely a great escape tool as well as harassment, of course. And Abaddon is pushing out the bottom, you mentioned. Pick up on some farm right here. Sitting there at 6th in the game, only 2600 net worth around that area. 
Gonna have a port coming in though, so we'll need to think about being a little careful here. Has borrowed time. Need be, but won't be necessary here. Cancel, meanwhile, he's got the Ring of Aquila gonna be coming, sitting with a second Wraith Fan as well. They're gonna smoke up him, Warlock, and the Rubik. And they're gonna head towards the bottom lane, actually. So, gotta get a kill out of this as well as maybe the tower push. You have that Warlock Golem as you're talking about. Yeah. Please. Mason, Mason actually going for the no boots build. I like it a lot. This game is it allows you to have enough slots for TP as well as going for the bottle wand and Aquila. So gives you uh, gives you Dragon's more slots down. to work with. Let's him go for this Dragon Lance very very quickly and you know lets him play very aggressive around the map as you did early on. Did feed a couple of kills, getting a little over aggressive, but can work out very well as lets you stay very sustainable with the Aquila mana regen, the wand as well as the bottle. So I like this no boots build coming up for Mason. Three tower kill, so we'll play by complexity. And she's gonna drop her right there. We see some bounty room control on middle tower. It's gonna be counter pushed by Team Onyx. Figure we might as well make the best of the situation. Shadow Fiend finishing his own Dragon Lance. Meanwhile, Dubu is doing a good job of cutting the creep wave. How much harder to protect said mid tower if they want to, which it definitely seems like they do. Fortification comes out. Top lane, what's going on up here? Beastmaster and Ember Spirit kind of saying hello. Oh, Rubik, he's charging in pretty ballsy. Needs to be careful, has that Shikuchi, but they spot him with the sentry. Out comes the ultimate from her shaker with the Echo Sand, but here comes the Warlock Golem. The fail is put out as well. The Ember Spirit flying in. Gonna get one, no, but tricks a bit. Uh, turning comes out right there for Mahani. Now he is gonna go down though. And now Flea gonna try to uh, fly away with it. Anyways, in the background, Rubik was picked up. Rebel War now on Amber Spirit, looking to turn on him. But they lose uh, Earthshaker back there. And now Beastmaster being chased down. The minions are killed, and the root from the series chains. That will secure him to it. Three for two exchange. Mason is going to have to squirm away, thinking about going back in, opening at least right there. But just kind of toying Assassinate's going up. Oh, there's the time lapse, though. And he'll be fine. Cancel taking some tower damage, but going to manage to survive. In favor for complexity there, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they use all their big ultimates, they get a couple of kills. Beastmaster goes down, so we're gonna slow down his Necker book even more. Um, not really in this kind of shape to fight right now on this Beastmaster. Wants to kind of chill, farm, get his Necker book up. So complexity using their cooldowns as soon as they have them, or as soon as possible, and taking that good fight. Have another smoke on Z Freaks. So look like they want to wrap around this tower. Not done yet, even though they don't have this rock. They build back up on Abaddon. All their other spells, very little cooldown, so looking to get active, continuing to stay active while this Beastmaster knocks for Rich, while the Shadow Fiend's still working on some of his core items. Dubu. Part of being active. Not gonna be enough though to chase the unsuccessful good job with the Major, but unfortunately didn't block the Ember Spirit, and now he's going in for some kills on a Beastmaster. Slow happening, but there's the boom headshot from the background. So with the assassinate takes out Beastmaster. Meanwhile, Melons is picked off, however, in return. So good job by Mason, at least getting the turn kill and an assist with maybe another Rubik is coming to Pidger. A great heal so from Abaddon. There's the Aphotic Shield. That will be enough to allow him to run it off. So a one for one exchange. Beastmaster for Warlock. Top tower. It's being pushed in though. Please gonna kill it. We're coming in, however, from monkeys. And you have to just trade auto attacks right here. He does have borrowed time, so he's not afraid to do this. And somebody's running in, then they have no way of stopping though. And that'll be Shadow Fiend escaping. Forces up the ulti and then TP's out immediately afterwards, so. Favorable trade for Onyx for sure. They do get that top tower, and Francis playing a lot like he did last game. He's pushing in a lot of these towers down. He knows that he can't really contribute too much to this fight as they just want to get back. These master going down very early in the fight and using his only neck Necro 1, so not very useful right now, backing up and waiting until they have that Necro 3. They get, you know, the Blink Dagger online and the Shaker. He's going to be farming up in this top lane for quite some time, trying to uh, trying to get up to that Blink. Once they do have these items, they're going to have some very, very strong pickup potential and map control. The Slipper heroes like the Weaver and the Blink stuns from the Beastmaster and the Shaker. That Whoa. Shadow Fiend. Going to be picking up that Shadow Blade. Middle lane. I'll just cancel more so, trying to pressure the tower once again, actually get a kill on it. Bottom lane, Warlock could be in trouble, Weaver, Jason. Don't have any kind of stun though, Melz picks up on that. And he'll just TP, <laughs> well it really wasn't that far, but it allows him to, to survive, so. Very good one at that. As uh, I see Dragon Lance on Sniper. Completed. Pretty standard stuff, but the Roar does come back, come off of cooldown. Level 3 Fissure. 
at level 3 uh, Aftershock, so they look to move up, make move up to this top line, going to the push lane so they know someone is going to come here and farm it, but who's spotting them out? He's under attack. Yeah, we're jumping initially, quickly fell back with the remnants though. Rubik though caught by the roar, a couple of combos right there from the stuns, and no, no chance for him to escape. Cancelled, he's the next target that looks like, out comes the Warlock Golem. Yeah, the Guardian Angel is going to be used, the Echo Slam comes out as well, but down to kill Zerchaker, not the biggest one. Dubu's going to fall despite the Guardian Angel, look at this upheaval. Level 4 upheaval for Melis, look at how slow they are. Both the Beastmaster and the Shadow Fiend, they're trying to run this whole time, and now the trap goes to the Shadow Fiend, and the Guardian Angel will not get it off in time, he goes down before. Level 4 upheaval doing a lot of work right there. Mason goes down to Mu as well. They really wanted to make move up to this top lane, find a pickoff, but Complexity kind of spotting them out. And they figured while we're here, Radiance might as well try and find a pickoff, but attack. not really working out the way they wanted to. Having to go a little bit too far, getting a little too aggressive after they got the kill on the Rubik. And losing 4 in return and going to lose his tier 2 tower. So really not what you want to see. Monkeys with that Vlad, with the level 4 Abaddon passive, so this tower going out very quickly, and we going for the Helm of the Dominator next, so give them even more tower and team fighting potential and complexity. That golem gonna be despawning right here, that's actually well played by the Warlock, yeah, he's to be a distraction, he's like, alright, you guys want the golem, have it, nope, never mind, gets, uh, he spawns anyways before you can actually kill it, so, full distraction, but makes the best of it, you mentioned Helm of the Dominator coming on Abaddon, that's gonna be big, Sniper, like that maelstrom just around the corner now uh, but yeah, how about that warlock level four up i feel like that's not the typical style of warlock build not that we see this hero lately a lot but um is this kind of unique or is this maybe a new thing or what do you think about it uh yeah typically you go for like four two four or or two uh, like two three two four sometimes you'll see um two two four is a little bit uncommon but not the most uncommon uh getting this upheaval max is really really nice uh, even though they have the Weaver who isn't really affected by it, very good versus all of their other heroes who to, they, they kind of want to just go in and commit, but whenever you commit and then you want to try and get back out, you're just sort of stuck there as, as long as this Warlock doesn't go down as level 4 people like happened in the last fight, they all just kind of got demolished or stuck there for forever. Causing issues there, we do see Monkeys is having free farm just pushing out this bottom lane. Attack. Meanwhile, the, the, uh, the Villa Discord on Ember Spirit, he's looking for a chance play here and Mason though it's a little bit too quick. He acts perfectly and no chance to go Radiant's for him. He's gonna take a turn stun but he just remnants out. There there's no chance for Onyx. They're gonna go to the Roshan pit though at least they're pinging it. Yeah they are running in here so Radiant's gonna go for an Aegis. Demon on that Earthshaker by the way to check the Blink Dagger progress. Getting about 850 gold so a little bit of ways but they'll certainly go for it. Come on, bottom secondary being pushed by complexity. It's all about those objectives. They pretty much knew Roshan was happening. Figured let's get a, a second tier tower out of it. And so at least they, they get that. But that's going to be an Aegis on Mason. Yeah, Weaver's the one that picks it up here. I think uh, yeah. Weaver over Shadow Fiend makes sense. Um, yeah, they want this Weaver to be going super aggressive. He just has his Deso now as well. He's the biggest damage dealer. And the Shadow Fiend. Mox, uh, not, not doing like a ton of damage right now, he's gonna go with the BKB once he has that. Not really gonna be going down very easily, and if the Shadow Fiend is going down first one in the team fight, then it's most likely the rest of his team has already died, he's gonna be dying again. So, the Weaver having the Aegis to play extremely aggressive, and basically keeps them from doing anything because Weaver has the death so he's gonna have a huge impact in this fight, he's going for the Lincolns next as well. It's like... Dude, some ancients of the team is complexity, some stack ancients, I'm not sure how many there were, but seems like there's a fair amount of Sniper getting some good chunk of farm from that. The top two farmers belonging on the side of complexity, Sniper and that Ember Spirit. Update. You see the net worth chart? It's been kind of an up and down roller coaster a bit. It's been climbing back in favor of Onyx somewhat, as of late, as it has the experience been. But overall, a pretty close game that definitely could uh, be on either side here. Demon, the the Blink Dagger check again is Radiant's just about there, about 2,000 gold saved up, so it'll be pretty clutch once he gets that. Be able to jump in with an Echo Slam. For now, he'll just throw out some Fissures and try to keep Radiant's these pushes from uh, happening too much, but Middle Tower, <laughs> it's gonna be an easy tower kill. Uh -oh. And they're oh. good with that. Oh, almost around. getting a kill up, almost killing Mu up top, barely oh, enough mana to get away before the Necrobooks burned it all away. Ace of me Okay, he's fine. Time lapses out. So yeah, action at the top lane, that was what you're talking about. 
manages to escape though. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Burp. Burp. Cole's team fight is just so strong right now. They have all these frontliners between the rock and the Avanon just running in. The Ember Spirit blinking in chains and locking people down for the sniper to just peep away. It's very hard for Onyx to take these fights. So once again, sort of their game plan they had last game, trying to split the lanes, get vision, and take the fights on their terms. Volva up top, lead down at bottom, still pushing here, killing that wave, the catapult rolling in to maybe get a couple shots in this tower. Know exactly where complexity is as they're moving them around the map, just trying to get as much farm as they can on these cores. Tagger picked up on our shaker, so again, great initiation now for Team Onyx. The shadow being scouting out with the shadow blade that he has. He's working on that silver edge now. And that first, he's gonna open with a requiem. Oh no, but the spray is just coming. There goes the man, Ooh. the requiem of souls. Making uh, equals a dead ember spirit. So. Yeah, the initial reveal of the uh, Earth Shaker Blink killing exactly the hero they wanted to, just shutting down this ember. It was getting quite out of control to have the Blink, the Veil, and the bots. Those go down, so very, very nice for them. Having the Requiem just on top, and now they get this tier 2 as well. Probably gonna get this mid tier 2 as well. Don't think they're gonna fight this top one, but if they, they do let this top one go, then they're gonna have access to the shrine, so basically TPing. They don't want to let these shrines go, so are going to try to take the fight here as there is no embers here for 15 seconds. Wow, Tubi just got bursted though, the Warlock only comes out, so without Tubi and that Omni Knight, that's quite the last time lapse from Mason. Going to make his escape, so there will only be the one kill, it gets actually pulled back in, but still slippery enough for that Shikuchi to make the ultimate escape, but so yeah, Warlock Golem will help, however, help them push this top lane. And that will be an easy tower kill. So yeah, that is the last outer tower destroyed, and now the shreds are vulnerable as you're getting at. Middle lane. Oh, Kate's on a flea right here. Not gonna be enough though. Proper war comes out. Oh, the turn on Ember Spirit. That's gonna be a turn kill. Great bait right there. Definitely saved by the shadow feed and right into the primal roar of the Beastmaster. Top lane. Meanwhile, Fissure block, but I don't know if they're gonna be committing to chase them by any means. Flex is going to fall back as a team, but they lose Ember Spirit again, so his farm is actually dope, dope quite a bit. I mean, he's now fourth place in the game overall, but when he was first here recently. Yeah, at the very least, um, the uh, they did take the tier 2 tower, not going to be wailing on these shrines. So this top one should go down. It looks like Onyx do want to contest, but it's going to take them a while to get there. They try to smoke up and hurry over as they know there is no golem. Lee leading the charge, but it does fall as... This, uh, this Ice Ogre creep that Monkeys has dominated has been having such an impact. Plus 8 armor on every single one of their heroes really limits the effectiveness the Deso this Weaver has. Almost countering out the uh, countering out the minus armor from the Deso completely. So, and then one, uh, one plus, plus one to spare. So, a really nice pickup from this Ogre as well as uh, Z Freak getting the Purge yeah. creep. So he has dominator his own, picking up the purge creep, so he's gonna give them some extra slow potential and can purge off the uh, the guardian angel. So getting these two dominators, two creeps that are very very useful, and so times we say that it's kind of redundant to get multiple creeps to the origin, it's not getting two creeps the very two different very useful purposes. Well, the mission's clear for Team Onyx. It's destroy Ember Spirit, and now they've done it three times in the last about three minutes or so. They get yet another catch on to hand. They smoke on in the shadow blade. And you see the echo slam. That blink dagger from Earth Spirit or Earth Shaker, excuse me, it's been fantastic and it's resulted in at least a couple of those kills. Cancel. He's gonna be fine. Barely makes his escape, but yeah, it's really keeping the uh, Ember Spirit in check. Is definitely hurting complexity's overall cause right here. As, yeah, I don't uh, even know if Moo has seen a creep in the past three minutes. <laughs> he's, he's trying. He would love to, but yeah, he's. Running into some trouble, clearly. Top lane monkeys, kind of chasing him. Yeah, they're collapsing onto him big time. He has a TP, of course, but they may catch him. The Beastmaster, gonna cut down the trees. And now Mason, he's gonna run him down as well. He's we need to try to TP here, but that's not gonna happen. He's possibly fine, because he does have borrowed time. So he can just delay this as long as possible. He does have support coming in. Who is it back? Let's go get your Guardian Angel comes out. Omni Knight, though, he's gonna block in here. Primal Roar from the background. But Dubu's taking down, and Moo's gonna finish the job with another slide of fist. But now Moo's the one needs to be careful. Yeah, you're rubbing it out. But Monkey, oh. he has the big support coming in now. The lift on the shot. There we go with it. He's a little bit of a And Shadow Fate is gonna fall. Moo ends up surviving throughout it all, as does Monkey. And now Mason on the run on this Weaver. 
Well played from Abaddon. Zephyr nukes him down to finish him off. Monkeys does finish off Demon. Almost adding insult to injury and complexity. Come on, big time in that fight. <laughs> That's Abaddon though for you. You gotta, you can't kill him quick. It's just so difficult. At the Vlads, the Ice Ogre creep, some of the Dominator. Uh, HP regen just took them so long. He doesn't even end up going down. It gives them enough time for the Ember to get in. They had to use the Guardian Angel very on, early on in the fights, and now threatening the racks with the Golem, marching towards the buildings. Everyone up on the hill in the Soul Four Abaddon passive. They're all doing so much damage to these buildings. Jumping quickly, Flea going to be rooted in place, but he has that repel, obviously, so it'll be more than fine, but this is going to be a tower kill for Complexity as they're sieging into the base now, root on a Beastmaster. That will be fine, you mentioned that aura, that aura that Christopher Vernon is doing a lot of work right here, Shadow Bean, he's looking for an initiation, he has that Requiem of Souls, still good to go, not the Max Souls, but still be plenty of damage, but they will get the racks destroyed, and Complexity falls back into the team, oh, Tufu almost falling to the Assassinate. And it just have just enough life though, so a ward up and now complexity gonna fall back and regroup here. So despite Ember Spirit dying three times in a row, it's uh, overall still working out pretty well for complexity here. Yeah, very costly mistake from Onyx, just a little bit overestimating their damage and losing three and then losing their melee racks now as well. Lee going for the Silver Edge first, now finishing up the BKB, so it's considerably tankier in these fights, but the rest of his team doesn't really have that luxury. They all die so quickly to the Fatal Bonds and all this Ember damage. This combination working out extremely well, and countering out Onyx is what they wanted to do very, very well. They wanted to get ahead, they wanted to walk down these towers, control, pick them off, and eventually break high ground that way, but Flex is not having any advantage, picking this incredible team fighting duo in their first two picks and working out really well so far. Just extremely hard for Onyx to ever team fight them, sort of like what happened last game. But complexity this game actually have some heroes, some catch potential. The Ember Spirit having Blink Dagger, Warlock with a very long range, Rock, they can stun people off and trip them uh, and force them to, to run away. Repel is stolen by Rubik currently. They're gonna smoke up right here. This is not seen, and they're gonna go right down the middle apparently. Now Rosha was killed, as we see there by Demonic, so maybe catching complexity a little bit off guard. They're gonna head over to the area, but gonna get there a little bit too late. At least for stopping any kind of Roshan retreat. And yeah, not gonna be able to catch anyone just yet. So instead, oh, they wanna wrap around top, it looks like. Be a good decision here. Later scouting things out initially. You got the Hawk. Gonna see them though. They're gonna find a jump on Shadow. Beat him all here. Oh, it's the biggest one. He pops the Shadow Blade. Do they have any kind of detection? He pops the BKB. What the bash immediately. In comes the Guardian Angel. And now Flea. He's just trying to flee right here. Monkey is gonna take the front of the Requiem, but not really doing a whole lot. Sora still being somewhat effective. But Searing Chase now. Uh, Root comes out. Down goes Zombie Knight. And now Flea. He's all alone for Tipper Charm. Ain't gonna save him here. Too much physical damage. That's a two for nothing in favor of complexity. Beautiful use of that smoke gank there. And Moo immediately TPing mid, trying to push these lanes. And knowing where Bulba is, getting the jump on him instead of the other way around is the next war on cooldowns of Bulba not able to threaten a kill there. As Moo does have the Lincolns now, so very difficult to get the kill. He has to pop the Necro, hit him with the uh, Archer Guys, mana burn target top. thing, and then top. roar him. That takes a long time, has plenty of time to get his lights off, and then chain. Um, and then Remnant out as he is pushing this top lane, has the bots up in 15 seconds, and can Remnant back as he does. They're gonna walk down mid and try and take these racks. They do have the goal. Melon's having a casual buckler, and maybe the mech coming in. Yeah, it looks like it is. So this is Complexity's go time. They wanna end the game right here. Shadow Fiend, no buyback. Did buy back in that last fight to try and defend top racks. And Rubik with the Purification. I'm sure he would've liked to have that Guardian Angel, but Purification having a nice little heal for the team. Ain't too shabby either. Gonna assist with pushing into the base now. So Abaddon, of course, continuing to lead the way. It's uh, round two at the base here for Team Onyx. They lost round one at the top lane. Gonna go for the middle now. And it's so difficult because Monkeys, it, he doesn't have an Aegis, of course, but he almost, he almost kind of does because of the borrowed time. You gotta be careful. He almost has a second life right there. So they just easily drop the tower. Really no defense being put on to Monkeys. Taking some good damage right here. Will pop the borrowed time. And he'll have to be a little more careful now as the Ember Spirit also in the background using that Remnant to his advantage. So, these are the racks that get, they get into about half life here. Well, they continues the question. Yeah, it was a very nice jump in from, uh, from Wu there. They may have gone and tried to chase down monkeys. 
but jumping in, sliding two, and sort of buying a little bit of time, allowing him to walk out of the door kind of distracted. They needed to deal with Moonai. Continuing to do that, just sort of force them around, distracting, as he does have plenty of enemies to work with and is me owner up, so if they do hit him, we'll take a little bit of damage back, just waiting for Monkey's ultimate to come back up. As he does have the blink now in Avanon, so they um, taking damage while you're in borrowed time doesn't cancel your blink, so you can absolutely always blink out. It's gonna make it basically impossible to kill him as he walks up this high ground and gives vision for the sniper to peek away, so a nice pickup that's gonna help them try and siege this high ground. Yeah, they're really just kind of playing the, the way and out game. Obviously, they have the top lane naturally pushing in for them. Already having the racks to start up there, so that's their advantage. And here we go. Here we talking about Monkeys goes in for all time. Ready to go. Gonna have to pop it soon. They locked out Weaver, but he gets the time lapse off. So Echo Slam in the background? No, he didn't actually Echo Slam. Demon jumped in, but didn't really catch him. He's gonna die, though. Has canceled. Just doing too much damage from a distance. And so that's what Sniper is really good at, of course. Seeing the obvious right here. Dubu. He's trying to heal up, but out comes the Warlock Golem, and there's a follow up. The Crying Angel goes up, but it's not going to really matter, at least for him. He goes down. Beast Master being locked down as well. Meanwhile, over here, Shadow Fiend, he's in trouble trying to deal with this Avanon. Ain't going to have enough damage. No Vimex to be had. And Complexity trying to even the series out one apiece to finish it here. And Team Onyx, yeah, they just don't have the firepower, it feels like. Mason, he too is going to go down. Aegis, yeah, he has Aegis that whole time, that's right. It's going to be you. They fully killed Rubik out of all this. Buyback on Urshik. He still has his Echo Slam, actually. Oh, he may be looking for a chance right here, but the Blink Dagger can get it off. And now Abaddon is dying to end. The Assassinate kills him anyways. Oh boy, that, that might be a... Uh, okay, let's throw in the towel, yeah. PG well played. Yeah, so Onyx, you know, playing around Lexi's massive team fight very well for quite some time, but sort of one big blunder trying to kill this Abaddon, overestimating their damage a little bit, and losing map control, all their leans were out whenever they went for that play as they committed quite hard for it. And well guys, that's gonna do it for this series now, complexity.
So just generally good versus in the game. There's a hero that you can play around. Uh, will do quite well versus in the lane. You can take his towers. Turn to um, shutting an Ember Spirit down early is something that's typically very hard to do because you can always just farm the lane with his uh, Flame Guard and then just push out the wave and you can never really break it. But Shadow Fiend is a hero that actually can break it as he does have three nukes. So able to bring down the shield as he builds up more and more damage. He's going to right click the Ember Spirit down. We'll have a very hard time in the lane. As well as picking the Omni Knight. So getting a hero that they're able to just five man around, heal up the Shadow Fiend, play around him. Reserve time. And, you know, obviously Omni Knight as well, very good versus the Ember Spirit. So obviously a pre-planned um, response that they had to this Ember Spirit. So expecting them to pick it and having this Omni Knight Shadow Fiend. So a five man centric lineup, a lineup that's very hard for the Ember Spirit to fight into. <clears throat> Dubu typically plays their Omni Knight, so maybe you can look for a, a hero that with a good stun versus the Ember Spirit for their offline or maybe a Leech Commander or something like that. So they uh, so they actually have a means of catching this Ember Spirit and that have sort of this Radiant invincible five-man draft. Walk down towers and Complexity isn't able to fight into. Yeah. Complexity goes the Ember as mentioned, but then they also go a Warlock. Now, Warlock kind of another one of these Complexity favorite heroes, I feel like, you know, that maybe isn't as popular on other teams as of late. I mean, Warlock has remaining. definitely died off, and Leshrac, of course, being banned by Onyx. Another one of those examples, Five but uh, the remaining. Warlock's second pick. Get here. Oh, uh, yeah, He's to be honest, the, the Warlock is good. Um, Onyx going for the sort of draft where they want to have this invincible five man where they walk down towers and Complexity realizing that saying, hey, we want to be able to fight you with these towers. Complexity, never a team to turn down a fight or pick a draft that really doesn't ever want to fight. So yeah. picking this Warlock and being ready to fight them with these towers, so like getting a quick six on the Warlock so they can take remaining. these team fights. Also can pair, pair up extremely well. Radiant Embers fail, team. all that magic damage combined with the Fatal Bonds just can massacre an entire team. Uh, if you get the the triple remnant on multiple heroes, There's a, I've seen I saw this the last game as well. But I'm curious what you think about this idea that complexity is banning Meepo now. Ten seconds remaining. Abed is arguably known as one of the best, if not the best, Meepo player. Obviously, again, Five not here. Please stepping in for him. Does Flea play it, or is it Fran still Francis, worth banning? Francis, yeah, Francis plays Meepo. Okay. So just Meeple to clarify, Star Ladder I League Star Series American Qualifiers. So. Uh, our second series, our middle series, even of the day, Complexity remaining. versus Onyx, and Team Onyx up one game to nothing right now in this two-game series. It definitely remaining. could have gone either way last game, but Team Onyx, uh, they just simply uh, played a little bit better. You know, it came down to that somewhat of a base race of sorts at the end, but the Evoker play of Flea, this standing player Flea has actually performed pretty well, I think it's safe to say, in that first game. Uh, well, what do you think, CC? Yeah, I think Francis played very well. It's gone by several previous, uh, several names in the past. Was playing on Duo before this team. They didn't really find too much success, but playing with a lot of you know better known players and more experienced, so maybe learning a lot from them, getting better while playing with them. Where you find an opportunity like that, so it's probably really trying to get the most out of this time while Abed isn't in the U.S. and he's playing with all these. Players with a whole lot of experience and knowledge about the game. Ten seconds remaining. And he is going to possibly be playing a Shadow Fiend this time around. Five seconds. The remaining. second pick Shadow Fiend. Omni Knight Shadow. That's such an odd start. I feel like not not a typical one. Reserved. What are they thinking with this? Um, Shadow Fiend. I think very good versus Radiant Ember Spirit in lane. Oh. Reserve time. Complexities turn to ban. <sighs> Radiant team ban. <sighs> Complexities turn to ban. Seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Ah, oh, come on. Radiant team back. back. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what is game number two now of this two game series? I am Frankie CPK, joined by CCNC here as my co caster. And you're tuning into the side that then. Yeah, he's one sense. of the one of the few high MR Meeple players in NA. Uh, before Artizi learned it, and a couple other players, him and then 
You know, there's some like lower MR players, some 6Ks that play Meepo, but he's really the only 8K player that plays Meepo in NA. Yeah. For RTZ. Well, there you go, guys. There's a uh, <laughs> there's your reason as to why they're still banning the Meepo. Side of complexity. So the bans finish up now. You mentioned a, a, perhaps a stun heavy off laner. The Slaughter is actually still on the board. He made it through. Yeah, there is still the uh, there is still the slaughter lead commander as well. Um, yeah, the the slaughter not really great versus Omni Knight Shadow Fiend. Um, can be good versus the Omni Knight if you want to right click him down, but not great versus the super strong five man lineups. As they'll typically pick strong lanes, so not great in the off lane. And then also get more for Onyx to be fair against Flexity. Yeah, it could be uh, it, could, it could be good for Onyx. Um, you know, it's decent versus the Ember Spirit, decent versus the Warlock. They already have a uh, they already have their four in the Omni Knights. Dubu almost always.